Hi, everybody. I'm Jeremy Hobbs, and this is Love One Another podcast, uh, teaching people about loving and uh, calling out hypocrisy everywhere we see it. Tonight, we have a special interview with someone from uh, that works here in Columbus, Georgia, and uh, has been a friend of ours for the Colgate Pod uh, for about three years now, more. Um, you know, recently, um, she's had a lot of heartache take place in her life. Um, her child was removed, and um, you know, a lot. We are, one of the number one things I encourage people to do for trans kids is be encouraging of them, to love them like, uh, unconditionally, uh, to encourage them to be who they want to be. Those are all key elements for a happy, successful life for trans kids. And um, this one person we're about to talk to, Ashley. Uh, has been doing just that, but is now being punished. Uh, and, and David, her son, has been taken away from her as a result. Ashley, welcome to the show. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, what's going on, and um, and just go ahead from there. Tell your story. So I'm going to go back to October 15th, 2021. 20, 20, yeah, 21. Um, that was the day my father passed away. He took care of my oldest daughter, Bella, age 13. She's at 13 now. And I stayed with them, taking care of my mom that had Alzheimer's until my dad's passing. Since then, it's been like downhill. My dad passed away, then my mom four months later, and my sister took it upon herself thinking that Oh, she's going to team up with David's dad. So she currently has my daughter that's 13, and David is with his father. And that all happened one year after my dad's passing. And it's just like spiral downhill. Um, I have talked to the court system. I have, um, right now, I do have a guardian of litem. She has not really done anything for my case other than the fact that I'm supposed to be able to see David and I've only been able to see him once. She wanted me to go to therapy because apparently there's something wrong with me for allowing my child to express themselves however they want. I did that in order to see David and Bella. Um, but my sister said that she still is refusing to let me see Bella until there's a court order in place. We've got the court order. We're just waiting on the judge to sign it. And it's been since May. So I've been dealing with court orders, the guardian of litem, my sister and Paul all since this coming May on this court order. And I still have yet to see them, even though that there's a court order in place. And they're all refusing to let me see my kids. Uh, David turned 10. I saw him the day before his birthday, before he turned 10. And that was the last time and the only time in, a, in the past year I've seen him or I've talked to either of my kids. Well, what was the original reason why um, they removed the children from the home? I know it's some bullshit um, charge. They, they tried to say that I was sexually abusing David, because I allow, I allowed him to wear dresses whenever he wanted to. Um, they did find a picture on his phone that you can clearly see he took of himself. Um, so that case has been dismissed. It's been dropped. Um, obviously, because I'm still, you know out here working, working my butt off, <laughs> you know, um, so despite everything, I still, I work pretty much at Giovanna's restaurant, open to close six days a week. <laughs> I occasionally have an off day. You've been dealing with all this for now. How long has baby been going since this last May? Um, it's been going on. October will make a year. I haven't, and I was able to see David for the first time May 27th of this year. How did David and have I 
he hugged me. He cried. He he wanted he wanted to be with his mom. And I have video, and I I catch myself watching it from that visitation. That's the only thing you get to hold on to right now, and the last bit, being able to see him. That's the only visual thing you can do right now. That's so sorry. That's so sorry. Um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that um, don't understand what this is all about. Now, what I can't understand is why, since the charges, the original charges, why they took your child have been dropped, why are they still be able to hold on to the custody? Why, why, is, why is that even continuing? Because I have not been able to go back to court. So they keep delaying it. They keep postponing They it. keep delaying court. And now I have this guardian of a litem that is supposed to be doing what's best for the kids, but she's not. She won't even, like, it took me six months to even get her to return my phone call. Right. Have you had and, any, any transferred to the Muskogee County Court Districts or, or District System? Um, Harris County is affiliated with Muskogee County. Mm -hmm. So it's within the same court system. I just, I'm not at Muskogee County Court. I'm still stuck in Harris County. I've requested to get transferred here and that's being delayed. And then with the guardian, she gave me visitation for one time a month. And then after the first visit, which was May 27th, the reason why I remember the date is because it was the day before David turned 10 years old. She was supposed to meet with the therapist to make sure that the, the, uh, David wasn't harmed or David was okay with visitation and stuff like that. And she's not even doing her job to where I can see David again. She has yet to meet with a therapist since May. Do you feel so she's I can biased? have more visitation. You feel she's biased? I really do. And when I try oh, to express oh, my oh, concerns oh. with my lawyer, then I get shut down with my lawyer also saying that I can't request a new guardian because what's not saying that you know, it get pushed back even further if I request a new guardian. And then the the judge can obviously deny my request for a new guardian. <laughs> and then Michelle, sorry, let me not say names. Then my new guard, then the guardian will take, you know, further biased action because Sure, there has she, to be a or something like that that you can report this kind of stuff to. If they're not doing their job, then why are they employed? I mean, they're there to do a, a job, a, a task for each person at a time. And, and my guardian, like, I wanted to report her after the first time we talked because of the simple fact that my daughter's name is Isabella. Mm -hmm. Okay, Isabella. I call her Bella. For short, friends right. and family call her Bella for short. One person that I know of calls her Izzy, and that would be my sister. And this guardian, the first time we met, kept referring to Bella or Isabella as Izzy. Okay, when you're a guardian, you're in charge of a child, you don't call them by a nickname. You call them by their legal given name. So in this case, the guardian should have been referring to my daughter as Isabella. Not Izzy, not Bella, not Joe. You know, she should have been saying Isabella. Now, you know, uh, David. And then that's right there is bias by calling my daughter Izzy. Like, I knew right then. As soon as she said Izzy, I knew something was wrong. Something was off. Yeah. You know, David had been out, you know, David has been out there and uh, shows, uh, performing, doing all kinds of wonderful things here in the community. And anybody that ever met David at the shows or at the events or what have you, and I'm going to bring up a lot of things that they tried to say. Um, David, David was full whole, wholeheartedly wanting to do these things. David loved doing what he did. I mean, he was, he's a hyper, very, very, very uh, energetic child who has a lot of energy and everything else. And uh, I'm sure it's a full-time job trying to keep him, uh, you know, um, uh, under a control into, a, into an aspect of that. 
because I mean, I've seen him take off and everything else, but I also see the love that you give him every time that he's there for performing and everything else. There are people that the father, I believe, had said that you pushed all this on to David so that you can make money off of him. Now, I can go ahead and vouch first right here. You made maybe one, two, three, four dollar tips or something like that. He'd always run and give it to you because you know, he didn't have room for it or whatever, and whatever he was performing it. So, what do you have to say about that? Uh, with his four dollar tips, I was I want to know which bill he paid because I had a uh, my rent alone was a thousand dollars. Uh, my power bill was a hundred dollars. Water sixty. So how does four dollars equal all that? How how does him going out there and getting a few dollars help me pay for stuff? Right. And in fact, he actually donated his money. And I've t- spoke with Coley about this on numerous occasions. How David would generously go spend his mer- money, his four dollars, at the table, and therefore he was do- donating it back to the church. He was donating it to Coley's church pretty much by going to buy items. I I have several like hats that David liked or and I actually have an umbrella that's currently sitting in my car right now that David liked that he bought with his own money from Coley for and giving it back to the church. Right. You know, and David is a, is a very beautiful child. He really is. But we can't say David's preferred name out here online because uh, they have uh, given you a gag order on that, correct? Why? Yes, they have. So they told you you cannot say David's preferred. And um, I, I've been asked by the mother myself uh, to remove uh, photos of David uh, uh, when uh, David is in his uh, persona. Um, you know, because David was going to actually be a part of a, a, a youth pageant that we was going to do and all these other things. And then, you know, everything went to hell because of the, the father and the sister. But um, there's people out there that say that you pushed all this on to David, that it wasn't his idea that you pushed to make making him wear dresses, making him perform, things of like that. What do you say to those people? I can't even make David eat, let alone wear something he didn't want to wear. Right. I, I can test um, that. <laughs> like... He, is- he lived on um, bar- honey barbecue chicken and butter bread. He he called it butter bread. It was toast. Right. He he had more butter on that than bread half the time. Yeah. I think you're a loving mother that truly is a tr- shining example of what mothers sh- and fa- you know, families should do for their trans kids out there. And it's sad that we're still ongoing with this. I made a copy. I mean, I've reached out to several people. And I'm going to send this video when we're done to a lot of those people and let them continue to hear what's going on. Um, because this is outrageous. It, it's, it's, it's criminal almost to a point. I mean, we do live in a red state. And so that's a big factor right here why we're still dealing with this issue. I mean, if it had been a blue state or up north or whatever, it probably would have already been resolved and done with. They would have done their investigation, saw that it was erroneous and been done. But a lot of harm has been brought to you personally because of this. And then on top of that, uh, whatever psychological harm has been done to David throughout this process since almost a year now uh, that he's having to be dealing with this. And, you know, of course, don't take this into consideration. They don't think about this factor and the fact that they just don't care. Uh, and you have a guardian that's not doing their damn job just tells me a lot right there that this is it feels like it's just set the courts. I mean, the system is set up against you. From the get go, it really does. And my thing is, is my daughter, my my thirteen year old Bella, she is disabled. She has Joe Bear syndrome. She so when I first found out I was pregnant with her, everyone wanted me to give her for adoption, my or not, yes, adoption, and even to the point of an abortion because we thought we knew something was wrong, but we didn't know what. My, I have. I wish I could find the recording. I really do of where my sister, because I recorded it, she was talking to my dad. And, you know, back then, this was 13 years ago, the house phone, you could pick it up, mute it and listen in on conversations. So I wish I could find that recording that I have of her talking to my dad 
with me listening in muted on the other line, how she said that I should give up my child because we didn't know what was wrong with her. There's speculations of Down syndrome, mitochondrial disease, and this was before I even had her. And now 13 years later, you obviously, you want her for some reason, all because you can't have any more kids. You have four. Why do you need mine? I only have two. You get assistance check uh, money for um, the your children, correct? Uh, can you explain that a little bit? Because I think that has a lot to do with what's going on here. Um, I was getting disability for Bella, um, and I and then I was I ended up getting through David's doctor getting disability for him because he's autistic. Right. And now all of a sudden, my sister saying that I forged the sit the system. I I falsely was getting this money for my kids and stuff like that. And I'm saying going, huh? Yeah, she gave me the benefits of that. I, I mean, while she t- continues to have uh, custody, correct? Yeah, but. Hello? You there? Ashley? I'm here. I um, was walking through the kitchen. I want to make sure that didn't get any background static. Okay, <laughs> Um, but yeah, she's reaping the benefits of that of that now. The one she says that you did all the notice that David's with the father and Bella's with her, the one that already has a check established, correct? Yes. She didn't want to have so to. So they're they're separating the kids. How is that helping anyone? So one year or it's going on two years now. October 15th, 2021, my father passed away. The only parent other than myself, Bella knew. She she was granddaddy's girl. She was if you ever saw my dad out anywhere, you always seen Bella with him. And 50% of the time was David because David lived with me. But because Bella was disabled and I didn't want to uproot her and move her and change, you know, her routine. Right. So I I left her there. Now when my dad passed away, I got Bella back. According to the court system, I I signed over temporary custody to my dad so that way she could remain in his custody, go to school, do all her therapy. But along the lines of we had a joint custody, like with uh, basically like parents, joint custody, mom and dad sharing custody. I took Bella to every doctor's appointment, to every therapy appointment, anytime she needed anything. I was the one to get it, to do it. I have pictures and they even got Bella's sixth grade teacher to testify against me saying that I was an unfit parent, saying that my kids, that Bella always showed up to school dirty, this, that, and the other. Even got, she even got defects involved saying that Bella was dirty. She, my mom passed away and we missed a week of school and so we missed Monday, thir- Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. They went back to school on Thursday. Then the teacher called and said that she had worn the same thing two days in a row. I said, how? We were not even at school yesterday. That's when defect said, no, that's false. We're closing this case. You are lying. And so that to the teacher. You know, I've, now, I've, had, I've had an issue with your school, too, the school that David was going to. I don't know. I remember- yeah telling us all about what uh, David had came home crying and said he didn't want to be his all, uh, persona anymore because the kids were being mean to him. We, uh, at Colgate Pride, I called the school and spoke to the school's uh, counselor. Now, thinking that this might help David, it actually hurt David because they called defects out as a result. And that's what I want to tell parents out there to, you know, and I tell your kids not to be truthful, but at the same time, though, when you go to school and you start talking about you want to be a girl and things like that, defects is going to be called in. Not because, you know, you've done anything wrong or whatever, but because school systems are programmed to call about abuse, about a kids being who they are, and they consider that abuse. You know, you did nothing to abuse David whatsoever or Bella. I mean, this is just, it's outrageous what we're continuing to have to see take place here and displacement of the children as a result from a loving home that they already had where they were vital and uh, thriving and being, you know, and, and being encouraged to be, you know, unique in the ways. 
Uh, I mean, it, it's 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 disgusting. It truly is. And the fact and, that we're still dealing with this for this long, I mean, I'm so sorry, Ashley. And so imagine my daughter being disabled, not knowing what's really going on. One like one year after her second parent, my dad dies, passes away. She's taken one year after that, stripped away from a second home she's only ever known. So, and then they really think that's okay. And when I bring up the fact that I have all this evidence claiming that they lied to defects, that they lied to the court system, that they're that the teacher in fact lied. I have pictures from the teacher, from what the teacher sent me of Bella in class. They would send me pictures like, you know, updated reports. Oh, guess what? My kids are all clean. My, Bella was clean, dressed, hair done. And I showed this evidence. And like, I have a whole folder full of evidence. The guardian goes, oh, it doesn't matter. The hell it don't. Sorry for my language. Because I was like, uh, like what? You're sitting here. They have this little piece of evidence saying that my kids are dirty. But yet I have all this evidence that they lied and that don't matter. I'm sorry I let my kids play outside and not on video games. You know, what you're doing with today, I mean, is something, uh, you know, I talked to somebody today on the phone. Uh, she's a representative for the fireworks company that we work for. And um, she told me a similar story. This one made me want to do your story today. Um, she talked about, you know, her son. Uh, he went back to school and talked about he was in a club for uh, when, uh, while they were you know out out for a week, because her um, brother had died. Her brother lived in Savannah and was a performer at um, Club One, I believe it's called. And um, the mayor was there. All these other people were there because they they had the funeral service there. Uh, he had ashes and everything. And um, Defax was called on the mother before taking the child to a gay bar, um, even though you know. What the purpose was and everything else. I mean, people use bars all the time for events and stuff, you know. But the fact that it was at a gay bar, uh, they felt like that was an endangerment to the child and everything else. Another issue where watch what you say, because uh, I mean, I might encourage people to ever hold back truth, but at the same time, though, uh, the school system, as far as what they report to people, it's not it's not helpful to kids at all. They're supposed to be there for the kid not for what they believe is incorrect or what is wrong doing or what, as far as being gay or straight or trans or any of that stuff. And they let a lot of personal biases get in the way. And it's like the court system has let this guardian continue to be biased towards you. Um, this is your last moment. I'm going to let you go ahead and say what you want to say. Make your plea out there to talk to people. Uh, Cause I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to send us a Lambda Lambda legal Lambda legal Lambda Lambda legal. Lambda, 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 and a couple other places out there as well to see if they'll jump on board and get some, some results for this because this ongoing battle, I mean, I, I've set you up with Land to Leave before, but they still have not done anything. Um, these people say they're supposed to be out there to help uh, families, help trans kids, and they're not doing what they need to do. Maybe they don't have enough help or something, but at the same time, though, this case here has resonance to be take, picked up. It really does. Um, how do you feel about your lawyer? But anyway, I'll just say all that whenever you but just go ahead and talk, say what you want to say and um, make your plea to the public. Yeah, I, I mean, I was just sitting here telling um, my husband earlier that I was like, I just wish someone would help, like anyone. What? Just, I, I was like, I just need connections. I don't know. I don't know who I need to talk to about finding someone. I just need someone to take my case as seriously as I do. Well, hopefully we'll find that and hopefully that will take place. And hopefully David and Bella will both be back home with you soon. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, I greatly appreciate your time. And, you know, uh, I applaud you for all you've done as a mother uh, for David and for Bella. Uh, and uh, you're loved. I hope you know that by many. Thank you. Bye. Bye.
Okay, well, that was uh, Ashley Jasper, uh, the mother of David and Bella. Uh, as you can see, this is a, a situation that has to be changed. We need we need real change here in the South and in Georgia to stop things like this from happening, for people just to make up false accusations and you have your kids taken away in the, with a blink of an eye. And when they're disproved, still have to keep going on battle to get your kids back. You know, uh, right now, the only thing I can think about is David being with someone that does not approve of their lifestyle, that does not want them to be who they say they want to be, and what the, the torment that David must be going through, feeling all these feelings and, and being told he can't. That's truly sad that, you know, we still live in a country where people have so much hate in their hearts and, you know, and uh, discrimination towards people that are LGBT. Uh, the, and it's gotten worse. It's gotten extremely worse over the last few years. In fact, LGBT people have lost a lot of ground, I believe, in this fight because of this uh, right wing uh, rhetoric that's coming out that are, you know, whenever I saw these events and they mention anything anti-trans or anti-gay and people stand and applaud. It's, it's just ridiculous. It really is. We still continue to see so much hate within our election. I hope that we can all remember uh, the basic of this whole podcast to love one another and rise above hate.